Grace to you and peace from God our Father and Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. When I was a boy, I loved snow days. If there was a forecast the night before of eight inches or, or more of snow, I just knew that there was a distinct possibility that school the next day would be called off. And that usually happened about once or twice a year when I was growing up here in Northern Illinois. Well, that night I would go to sleep, but I would get up in the morning and I would rush downstairs and I would turn on Channel 9 and watch Ray Rayner. Because Ray Rayner, in addition to all the Bugs Bunny cartoons, would also be reading the school closings and I would wait with bated breath for that school closing that I wanted to hear. And when he said, St. Paul's Lutheran Church and school in Round Lake, Illinois is closed. I would let out a whoop. I would run back upstairs. I'd put on my snow pants and coat, my hat and gloves, and I'd go outside and play all day in the snow. Now, I've not outgrown my love of snow days, but I am more aware and wary of weather now that I'm a, an adult and a father. I've told the story about how a, wind, how a windstorm tried to blow the roof off our house when we lived in Wisconsin one year. And that story is told in the devotion, Natural and Special Revelation, which is included in the latest paperback and Kindle edition of In My Father's Footsteps, known as I Know That My Redeemer Lives. But I would never forget my love of the weather as a young boy, my weariness of the weather as an adult, and I would watch the Weather Channel first. I would watch it all the time. I was a weather junkie until they started putting on all these produced weather documentaries. And I stopped watching that for the most part. But I would never miss, and I still never miss, a Tom Skilling weather forecast on Channel 9. Tom usually is not wrong when it comes to predicting the weather. He does hedge his bets, as most meteorologists probably should, but he's usually pretty accurate. And I also love to watch Tom because he would put pictures, interesting pictures of the weather that people would take and send in to him. And he even has played some of my pictures on the show. I would take pictures of the snowfall around the parsonage here and around the church. He's put it on over the last couple of years. And even though weather can be predicted, it cannot be controlled. We cannot control the weather. That's because there's really nothing in our power that we can do to control weather. It will be rain or sunny no matter what we do. And no matter how hard we try, we can't make it be 100 degrees or snow or, get, or stop snowing or getting hot. We are literally powerless when it comes to the weather, but God is not. In Job chapter 37, the chapter before today's epistle reading, or Old Testament reading, Elihu concludes his monologue in that chapter by talking about the weather. Specifically, how the power and majesty of God is evidenced in the weather, and especially a storm that is coming. As Elihu gets up to speak to Job and his friends who have gathered around, and they've been talking for 36 chapters, there's a storm brewing off to the west. Flashes of lightning and thunder are barreling down towards them. Elihu says, the Spirit of God has made me, and the breath of the Almighty gives me life, and the west wind picks up and whips around the group. Elihu proclaims, keep listening to the thunder of his voice, and the rumbling that comes from his mouth. Under the whole heaven he lets go, and his lightning to the corners of the earth, and flashes of lightning, and booming thunder sound forth. Elihu points to the storm that is coming and is here, and tells us that this is the power of God. That would, as St. Paul says, teach, reprove, correct, and train in righteousness. And it is out of this particular storm that God will speak and reveal himself to Job. And that starts in our uh, reading from Job today, Job 38. God puts questions to Job, and I think they're rhetorical. I don't think God expects an answer, and of course Job doesn't give him one because he can't. But these rhetorical questions are pointing to the truth that God is the creator and Job is not. But why speak out of a storm at all? C.S. Lewis once wrote, God whispers to us in our pleasures, speaks in our conscience, but shouts in our pain. It is his megaphone to rouse a deaf world. Storms are God's way of getting our attention. And let's face it, there are a lot of things in this world that are clamoring for our attention. That text you just received. The email that came in an hour ago. 
the TV show that you want to watch tonight, or the pretty girl or the handsome guy walking down the street, or the game that you've scheduled next week. And we are the most connected and the most busy culture in history. And God wants to talk to us. God wants our attention. So it's no surprise to me that he has to send storms to get it. When we go through storms in life, literal storms like we did this afternoon here at the church, or storms of our own making, or storms of illness, or pain, or despair, or even death, or storm, any storm that comes our way completely out of the norm or unexpected, remember this, God is in the midst of the storm. And remember this, God can calm the storms. He did it twice, Jesus did, in Matthew 8 and John 6. But when God doesn't calm, calm the storm, he calms you in the midst of the storm. Read those same passages, Matthew 8 and John 6, and you'll see Jesus not only calming the storm, but calming his disciples as well. Praise the God of heaven and earth the next time you see a storm. Or the next majestic sunset or sunrise. Anytime that you're going through a storm. Because God is in all of that. And through Christ Jesus, God is in you. Now, in the particular storm recorded in Matthew 14, it's called the great wind. Jesus comes walking out to the boat that has the disciples in it. And he's walking on the water. That's amazing in and of itself. But then there's this exchange with Peter. The exchange culminates with Peter getting out of the boat, walking on the water, and walking to Jesus. Sometimes the storm is calm, but sometimes our hearts are calmed, and we get out of the boat, and we walk on the stormy water. But we are always to walk with our eye on Jesus, and we are always to walk towards Jesus. Keep your eyes focused on Jesus, not on the storm all around us. The great comfort is that even though we are tempted to look away from Jesus, we call that sin, Jesus reaches out and pulls us out of the water of sin and death. And through Jesus' blood and righteousness, we are forgiven of all our sins. Now, remember, Jesus was born at night. He lived his life perfectly in the midst of many storms in this world. He died on the cross in the pitch back black storm of the forsakenness of God. All for us, by the way. Rose from the grave again at night and ascended above all storms and all clouds the promise to come and back someday and take us to be with him who believe in him in heaven. Now, because this is true, and because this is true for us, we can get out of the boat, like Peter did. And by this, I think Jesus means that we need to get out of our comfort zones. We need to leave behind that which is comfortable and making us complacent, and to actually have an adventure, because Jesus wants that epic adventure for us, the adventure of following him, focusing on him, and telling other people about him. Because Jesus is there, out in the storm. And he's calling to us, out in the storm, to come to him, to be with him, and to tell others about him. Make no mistake, we are in a storm in this country. The storms of homosexuality, transgenderism, political division, abortion, opioid addiction, pornography, the lack of civility, the list goes on and on and on and on. And make no mistake, Satan has unleashed this putrid and disgusting arsenal of hell upon us in this world. But Jesus is here in the middle of it all. He is in the storm and he's calling you and me to get out of the boat and come to him. By the power of the Holy Spirit working through word and sacrament, we can get out of the boat, into the storm, and love all people and engage this culture with the law and the gospel of Jesus Christ. So, here's what I propose that we all do. This weekend, let's enjoy the pig roast. Let's have fun. 
good food, fellowship, games. Then tear it all down Sunday night, go home, sleep well, and then Monday morning, get out of the boat by reading our Bibles, having daily devotions and prayer time, worship together each week and engage this culture with the love of Christ. Thankfully, there's plenty of opportunities to do this for all of us. We can participate in devotions. We have the Taking Faith Home devotional resource in your bulletin. And the daily devotion that's recorded based on those readings, Monday through Friday. There's the Bible studies, ladies, men, adult, youth, weekday, weekend, Sunday school, worship services, that we can worship together every week. And in a couple weeks, our day school starts. So those of you who have kindergarten or preschool age children, our Luther Day School is here. Another opportunity to get out of the boat and do something different following Jesus because God is calling to us out in the storm to get out of the boat and to join Jesus out there. So let's get out of the boat and keep our eyes focused on Jesus and engage this culture. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I pray that you will either calm the storm I am in or calm my heart in the storm as we engage our culture in Jesus' name. And all God's children said, Amen. Amen.